Hallmarkies and Sleuthers, today I'm Casey, and today I'm here with Terry, and we're so excited to be chatting about the three Jane mysteries that recently released on Hallmark Plus. So, before we started the recording, Terry and I were just about to talk about all the questions we have. So, <laughs> Terry, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Did you? So, let's start from the very beginning. Did you watch the first Jane when it aired? Or yes, when it released. Okay. I so did. You did. Mm -hmm. I did not, which is why I watched that one thinking it was new and then realized yeah. too late that <laughs> it was not new. <laughs> um, how, how are you feeling right now? So you watched the first one. There's three more. And I know we had jokes like, this is the series we didn't really ask for. So no, I just it is know. not. Yeah. I am perplexed that it came back, let alone for a second but like four in total now and uh i don't know i i kind of like this series i do have fun with it but do they intentionally make it the way that they do to like be campy or do they think they're doing something good because yeah. i don't know how this got made <laughs> really, let alone four i don't you know yeah i mean oh I, I just it's all coming to me right now it's like each movie has a like this I, I mm -hmm. like the hokiness of the first movie and her disguises mm -hmm. and I've never read the book series apparently they're a bit older and there's only four. Oh, but okay. yeah there's only like four books and they've made three I looked it up uh, well loosely because they don't match any of the descriptions of the book the Hallmark movies but they've made three out of the four and just made one up themselves. Mm. And okay. I keep waiting for her. I was like, "It is her name is Jane De Silva," and I'm like, "Is she part of my people? Will we uh, ever get a clue about that?" Because I know I'm not a De Silva, but I know seventy thousand of them, mm -hmm. and I and but they never answered my question, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, it's funny oh that you say. Um, <laughs> all that because I too when this first came out I was like what the heck this uh, is not yeah yeah so I didn't watch it and then to prepare for these because I volunteered myself to um recap this I was like well I have to I have to like you know like really dive in like let's put my feelings aside and yeah. I'm a little I'm kind of mixed feelings honestly mm -hmm. because it wasn't so campy like um, Nellie Knows. Oh, my Did gosh. You know? I know. That right. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. That one was like <laughs> bizarrely quirky. <laughs> In an endearing kind of. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It was endearing to me because I like Pascal and Cabin. But yeah. for a murder mystery, it was like almost over the top too campy. Totally. Yeah. This one feels like. It almost feels like um, old Hallmark mystery in that yes. regard. Like the Lori Loughlin, the Candace Cameron Bure, the like that era of. Just, just not as well made. Yeah, yeah. And because it. I yeah. swear this movie only has two sets that they redress constantly mm -hmm. because the majority of the movie is like fake fake backgrounds or cgi backgrounds mm -hmm. which you could clearly tell but i give them props because they're i i somehow feel like they this is made by another studio and hallmark bought them because they're cheap yeah. <laughs> that's what i feel like i don't feel like you know i feel like they're acquisition light mm -hmm. yeah yeah it I, I i will say i feel like the last one i feel like that one was on par with hallmark yes uh, a little, jumping ahead here, but the last Jane movie was probably the best for mm -hmm. me out of the four. Yeah. But especially out of the three that aired, that premiered on Hallmark Plus. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It is also weird to me that they all just kind of went, here you go, on <laughs> Hallmark Plus, boom. Like, oh, okay. Are you trying? These are, to yeah. 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 I'm sure these will pop up next year, probably in February or January. Mm-hmm on Hallmark Mysteries proper, but they just had to get it out there. I, I was like, do they have to get it out there for tax purposes? What's going on? You know, these are all, 
They right. needed content. They needed content, so they just put these out, which I yeah. get. Yeah, that makes sense. I was thinking, like, hey, they're trying to attract a younger crowd. Jody Sweetin, mm -hmm. Full House fans, like, well, how much younger crowd? I mean, I hate to put it this way, but come on. I mean, like. I was young when that show was on, so we're all the same right. age. I don't know who you, right. what younger crowd you're attracting. <laughs> I know. Maybe. Because the show did come back in Netflix. Maybe they got newer viewers. But, like, old school fans, I'm like, we're all the same age. Yeah. We're all old at this point. Like, <laughs> Yeah. We're, like, in our 30s and 40s. <laughs> right, like, I'm in my mid-40s. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, yo, I, for a moment, I thought, I think we're either the same age or I'm actually older than Jodie Sweetin. I but you know it's like yeah yeah but she she does have she does carry these films there is something about her a charisma that just it works mm -hmm. within these movies and and they're definitely camp mm -hmm. so you know for me it's like she works in it okay some that people are lost you know but right right I, and that was going to be my next question for you is how do you feel about Jodie Sweetin? So, like, yeah. obviously, we're OG Full House fans because, like, mm -hmm. you know, it aired when we were children or whatever. Yep. Um, so, you know, love Jodie Sweetin. I really enjoyed her in the Fuller House um, reboot and stuff. But when she's done some of the other Hallmark movies, I don't know if it's my bias because, like, I remember Jodie as Jodie Sweetin from Full House, not Jodie Sweetin as an adult. So I never... Yeah. Like, her movies were always a hit or miss. And when they were a hit, it was, like, a very average hit. Like, the movie just either wasn't a good script or the chemistry didn't hit for me yeah. or anything like that. But with the, this series specifically, like, the goofiness of the plots aside, she does carry this series. Oh, like, yeah, she does. It's, like, a good fit for her in this one. Yeah. I mean, even the heiress movie, the... Uh, the, the movie that lied to you, the heiress and the handyman. He's oh. not even her handyman in that movie. <laughs> that was not a good movie. And I am still perplexed how, how that's the highest rated Hallmark movie this year. But Really? You know, it is. And it's because they're on a farm. She's rich. And I swear it's old school uh, Hallmark. That's why people watched it. But even in that movie, which is not good, she there's something about her that carries it. It's like mm -hmm. she knows her abilities. She knows what she can do and i think she's very confident in that and it does show in her performances mm -hmm. like she gets it she really gets it yeah whether yeah. it's good or not she herself gets it and i i will say from that alone i i wouldn't be mad if they continued the series <laughs> oh i wouldn't either i am anticipating new installments because i was like i want this cheese yeah you know it's like i look forward to Man, I look. I just look forward to to, to the camp because mm -hmm. there are some moments in here that is just very questionable. Wardrobe yeah. choices, uh, CGI backgrounds, right. questionable acting. We're gonna get to one of these movies where I'm like, just nobody prepared, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I just locked in the door. Right. <laughs> All right. Ho ho ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcasts, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash Hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash Hallmarkies. So the first Jane mystery is a deadly prescription. I'll just read the um, description from Hallmark here. Singer turned detective Jane DeSilver continues her journey as the head of her family's foundation, a nonprofit detective agency dedicated to aiding those who can't help themselves. 
When Sandra Duche approaches the agency desperate to prove her teenage son Ryan an innocent in the murder of a local pharmacist, Jane feels a personal connection to the case. Partnering with Detective John Cameron and guided by her aunt Sadie, Jane delves into a complex investigation involving false confessions, missing witnesses, and buried secrets. As the stakes rise, Jane and John must race against time to uncover the truth and bring justice to a family in despair. Whoa. Yep. That's all right. Yes. <laughs> it it is a lot. Um, what were your initial thoughts on this movie? Uh I've actually thought I like this one. I thought this is a strong uh a strong movie to come back into premiere on mm-hmm. on the streamer. I thought it's like, you know, at uh I was like, good, we st- we start good. It's a little bit better than the first film. Mm-hmm. Now I can't remember the name of that one. But I, I did think like, okay, we're moving along. There's like a lot of red herrings. There's stuff to do. <laughs> there's, mm-hmm. I, I probably, because I got to give chef's kiss to Sadie, that aunt, because there's a moment in this movie where it was absolutely bonkers. And I was like, this is the greatest moment I've ever seen when the aunt is like, I was nominated for a Golden Globe in 1987. And I oh. dare say this is my best performance yet. We're jumping ahead. But like when she's being held hostage, just the insanity of that whole entire scene. And I was like, this lady knew what she was doing. And that's probably why I gave this movie three stars on Letterboxd because of that <laughs> moment alone. Yeah, no, she did. So I, I was kind of like, wait, is she being for real? <laughs> I don't know, but she she was like, oh, and she was being for real, and I was like, bless you, mm-hmm. bless you, lady. You know, yeah. She knew her assignment. She just she went ahead and did it. Yeah. I do question why these ladies, and this is in all the films, they're a little too comfortable just walking around the house in pajamas, talking to random strangers. Did right. you understand? Know and why does John? Does he have a key? He he pops in and out whenever he wants to. Yeah, he's just like, what's up, guys? Like. <laughs> But well, do guess, you have a key, sir? Why do you have a key? You know? Right. right. <laughs> and I was, I mean, like, maybe the uncle gave him the key because he's, like, part of the, the group right, yeah, or whatever. They, yeah. But still, it's kind of like, do you not They really knock? keep, I know, they keep getting new cases instead of digging into the to the numerous cases they do have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they just oh, randomly. I do like how this movie starts, uh, and all of them do really, with her singing, mm-hmm. and it's like like forty five seconds of it to like an empty crowd, basically. But I do, I do think that they do the musical numbers kind of well. They make it interesting, you know, and mm-hmm. and so that's the fun part, which because she is the singer, yeah, you know, and so she's got to sing in here, and uh, she does it a couple of times in this movie, but mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I do like the singing at the beginning. And yeah. you can tell it is Jody. Like, it's not yes. terribly, yeah. you know, auto-tuned or anything. So you no. can tell it's Jody from, like, her past singing experiences and stuff. Um, I'm still always trying to figure out, like, okay, what's, is the song a purposeful connection? Like, what, are, what like, what? But that's not really. I, I don't think so. I don't. I just think they pick like certain clips, you know, because it goes by very quickly. And it's mm-hmm. just I, for this particular movie, I don't think so, because she's, she's singing and, and mm-hmm. he's playing drums in another band. And I was like, wait, he plays drums now. And he's this cop is the lover of Hawaiian shirts. By yes. the way. He's got tons of them. Like, I kind of like the wardrobe choices because sometimes they're bonkers, but sometimes mm-hmm. they're very bright and colorful. And other times you're like, that's just too much, too much color for me where I'm like, it's too many colors for me personally, but I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 This one was, this one, I I think the crime itself was a little bit more serious because we have a kid in jail who Mm -hmm. says he did not kill this person at a pharmacy. And so, and you know, and um, so Mm -hmm. I appreciated that. At least the crime was a tad bit more serious, but everything around it was not, which is a weird uh, combination. Yeah, yeah, and so that the whole the whole murder situation. Mm-hmm. I, I will ask you this: Do you have any suspicions as to who the murderer was going into this one? Oh, I kind of figured out from the minute I was like, "Oh, it's him, the husband." Yeah, the yeah. husband. Oh, well, spoilers here. I didn't know if we were spoiling oh. it, but yeah. Um, 
you know, why not, guys? You know, if you're oh, there's listener. one thing that Hallmark falls into a trap with that I've noticed with mm-hmm. their mystery movies is that sometimes a majority of the time it's kind of easy to figure out who the killer is because they have the least amount of screen t- screen time and the mm-hmm. least amount of ca- character development. Yeah, that is you true. Know? Sometimes they just have like one line and you're like, wait, how are you the killer? <laughs> right, right. You're like, you just popped out of nowhere. I thought you were just the delivery man here. Like, what? Yeah, um, I, I kind of figured it was going that way. Yeah, I my my thought immediately was, oh, it's the husband. Because yeah. Because it's greed. It's either like one of three things, either murder because of greed, love, love affair or power. Absolutely. And yeah. So I was like, nobody else would have that connection now i think like piecing everything together i would like i was trying to still figure out like where would where would this was going um but i think one thing i did appreciate about this this one particularly it was multi-layered because i know Mm -hmm. in the past in some of the other hallmark movies it's literally point a going to point b yeah how do we get there like who who done it but this one was a little more complex because it was the whole we have another character who's being blackmailed because of the insurance fraud. She's that is trying something, to do the right thing. Yeah, that is something that these some of these movies are, which is weird that a movie like this would like, let's put in like a social commentary on how hard it is to get insurance and insurance fraud so this lady can get her medication. And I'm like, okay, not in this movie. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you take like serious, like, topics you know and then putting Mm -hmm. it in this camp movie it is weird but like i appreciate they go there i guess yeah (laughs) and i yeah i I think like it just makes it a little different because i think you know obviously with hallmark everybody's like oh it's the same freaking christmas movie right yeah you know it's the same at least they're trying right yeah 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 that was my thought is like at least they're trying to do a little something different so it's not so blatant like you know, the pharmacist's husband going, oh, her father didn't give me what I wanted, so I murdered her. <laughs> like, Because <laughs> right. that's happened before. So I could appreciate okay. the blackmail and all of that stuff. I um, will say, though, it's very funny that when she's, you know, trying to get information at the pharmacy and she's getting shot down, Jane, and she walks out and that air conditioner, like, literally almost lands on her. And she startled for like a hot moment. If that was me, I would have gone in the building and yelled at people like, what are you doing here? You almost killed somebody, right? She just yeah. walks to her car going, I almost had an air conditioner fall on me. Like, uh, does that happen a lot? And I was like, lady, go yell at somebody. <laughs> yeah. Be concerned. And I do have to laugh because they had to wrap it up. But when they're at the casino and you so clearly, I don't know how the doctor thought he was going to get away with poisoning a lady's drink but he's doing it out in public and they're like oh look there he is and right it's, like, it's like, so funny <laughs> right right he's just like running out and he's like oh you know what i'm just gonna go to you know whatever um aunt sadie's house and schmooze right. her yeah i mean they're not gonna call her it's gonna be they clearly saw me put poison in this drink and then i ran he hustled out of there like real quick and they're like no let me just go here they're not gonna know where i am (laughs) right and then the other thing too with that one (laughs) he they they ran they kind of went after him in a sense and yeah how 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 slow were you driving they totally were because he was like 20 minutes ahead of them in this one (laughs) hundred percent so, I mean, he had enough time to get in the house and wine and dine her, like, dance oh, completely. or whatever. Call the police. Tell the police that they were okay. You know, <laughs> what is happening? They uh, just let this guy get so far ahead of them. You know, yeah. oh, we got to stop here and talk for a moment with this lady and let's try real slowly. Oh, Yes. And um, that's another thing too. Like when she's driving to the lady's house before we figure out that it's insurance fraud that you know, and she's running away from this because she's being blackmailed. Mm-hmm. And, and this guy is like following her, and she meets him like getting coffee, and she's like, eh, shrug his shoulders, like this might not be important. And I'm like, lady, there's this weird guy following you guys around. Like maybe it's important, right? Yes, the yes, the insur- it's the private de- detective, uh, you know, searching for insurance fraud, right? Which he was not good at his job because he's right there in the open, which yeah. tracks with private investigators, yeah, uh, doing that because I had that happen to me one time. Oh gosh, <laughs> yeah, I was a passenger in a car, 
uh, in my in my brother in law's car, and uh, somebody hit us from behind. And so, uh, you know, I had a bad knee from that and all this stuff. So it's a typical lawsuit, right? Mm -hmm. Your insurances are doing that. And I had this guy sitting outside my house and I was like, what's up, bro? And he's like, oh, I just want to know if you had a bad knee. And I was like, yeah, I got a bad knee. You want to look at me? (laughs) He's just out in the open. He's supposed to be hiding. And I'm like, we're fine. You know, I mean, yeah, it's it's still funny, but it is, in my experience, it's very typical. (laughs) Yeah, that is so funny. Yeah, he... And he was acting so suspicious too. I know, like, like dude. But she's like, cool. she waves it off, like, oh, it can't be serious. Like, I'm in no mere danger. You just right. had an air conditioner almost fall on you. Right. <laughs> I love how she just shrugs it off. She's like, uh, I, I kind of am disappointed she didn't have too many crazy disguises in this one. No, she didn't. Which was that was a little that was a little sad. Yeah, a little. I sad. mean, she didn't do it up. You know, I mean, right. she still looks exactly the same with the crazy disguises, but. Yeah, right. they didn't have any fun with that one. Right. I mean, it's it's just a thing that you have to do for this one. Like, if you're going to make it different, also bring back the crazy disguises. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all right. Any other thoughts on this movie before we go to the next one? No, I think this one's fun. Like, if yeah. you like camp, then this is a series for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, this one I liked. Um, yeah. I, I definitely liked it. It wasn't my favorite, but it was like, okay, I, I'm digging it. Okay, cool. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the good folks at Harpeth Road Press and bestselling author Jenny Hale and her new book, Noel Bridge. They say there's a covered bridge that heals the sick and mends the broken. Actual miracles have happened within its green clapboard protective shell. When Alicia Silver faces spending her first Christmas without her fiancé who has passed away, she knows that the only way she can manage through the season is if she has a little divine intervention. So she heads to snowy Smoky Mountains to visit that bridge, hoping to reach her fiancé somehow. But she isn't expecting to encounter Leo Whitaker when she gets there, a heartwarming holiday getaway that will have you believing in the power of love. If you enjoyed the Christmas movies based on Jenny's book, and are searching for more feel-good small-town romance, look no further. That's Noelle Bridge, and you can purchase it wherever you purchase your Christmas books or use the affiliate link below. That's Noelle Bridge by Jenny Hale. All right, so next movie is Murder at Mosby. When a mysterious photograph from her college days resurfaces, Jane De Silva is drawn back to her alma mater to unravel a 15-year-old mystery. The photo captured by De Silva's college boyfriend, Anthony, depicts a masked figure seemingly disposing of a body during the inaugural Edgar Allan Poe Festival. During initial skepticism by Detective John Cameron, Jane goes undercover as a visiting music professor to investigate with uh, support from her Aunt Sadie. As she navigates the intricate dynamics of the faculty and confronts secrets long buried, Jane finds herself entangled in a web of deception that leads to a shocking revelation of love, loss, and lengths people go to to protect their secrets. Woof. Um, <laughs> this one, this is one is bad. This, this is one. the worst one. <laughs> I I sat there and I was like, no camp can save this. <laughs> and it was so... <sighs> I mean, the acting is so, I'm just going to say it. The acting is terrible from almost everyone involved in this one. And we've seen some of these people in other Hallmark movies, but Mm -hmm. like nothing could have saved this one. It was, they were so over the top. You know, I I did like the musical numbers. And Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I was tricked by this poster. I don't know why I had a dumb moment. I thought it had, maybe it would have something to do with Halloween because she's kind of, Mm-hmm. Got the raven and like the mask, and it was like, oh, maybe it's a Halloween thing. It's an Edgar Allan Poe festival, and I'm like, oh, oh right. yeah. Well, I I messed up on that one. I I looked. <laughs> I thought it was. I was excited for a minute. It was like, ooh, something stuck in Halloween, but not. And to be mean, uh, yeah, there's no way she went to college 15 years ago. Maybe 20. Um, right. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> right. Yeah. A little bit. I I and was like, oh, okay. Hmm. It's She's- just. This one is so bizarre because they get really serious on undocumented. Uh, they're like undocumented workers or illegal uh, residents. And and uh, I mean, it's like very uh, totally hot button now, you know, yeah. uh, especially in this country, uh, as we speak, because elections are coming up conversation. Mm-hmm. But I just thought it was 
not weird, but it felt very weird in this type of movie, especially in this movie where it is just awful. Yeah. You know, like nothing works. It also looks the cheapest out of all of these movies. Mm -hmm. And they literally, there's, I knew they threw it in a montage with terrible music. Right. Of her just interviewing people. I was like, they, they ran out of time. They needed to fill the time. They right. needed a clock in the amount of time. That's why they did this. Yeah. And it is just, I can't express, like, I was gobsmacked. I was like, we've all seen bad things. Sometimes they're so bad, it's entertaining. Yeah. But this was just like, wow. You know? The, this one, the, wow, yes. This yeah. one was hilariously bad. I like, mean, yeah. I, mm, yeah. Okay. So going back to the undocumented workers situation. Yeah. When we were talking about that, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. When that whoa, came whoa, out whoa, whoa. and they're very, you know, they're being very well, sometimes they can't afford it and they're and they're coming over here for a good life. And I was like, okay, this is all valid. You could do this in a mystery movie. This this all makes sense. Like not, you know, but sure. in this particular in this particular movie, I was like, what are they trying to do here? You can't I mean, I guess they could because they did, but like it's so campy to just be like really serious mm -hmm. with it. Like they're not making light of it. It just felt weird. It, it was definitely you know? weird, and I think it was also it, my, uh, the mail order yeah. bride thing. I was like, oh yes, I forgot about that too. We, we even threw that in here, and uh, I'm like, guys, like uh, you know, I know, I know. you know. <laughs> yeah, that one was just like, I mean, they have to have it for the storyline of yeah. the extortion and the money and situ all that. But I was like, did we have to go there? Could it be that maybe this person just came over, ex extended their welcome or their v their visa, exp right. like maybe their visa expire, and they were just here? Oh, yeah, they just decided to stay, right? But yeah, they yeah, just you know? like kind of like just leave it, and then these two people they fall in love, and then have the whole backstory with her family not appreciating their relationship exactly. and all nope. that stuff. But do we have to go mail order bride? Like mm -hmm. I and it's like hmm. and when you find out what really happens to this missing woman, I mean at first it's like it's Jane's ex boyfriend from college. Mm -hmm. And you're like, ooh, maybe something will happen with there because there is kind of a flirtation with John. Mm -hmm. And you're like, mm, it goes nowhere. Mm -hmm. It goes nowhere. And when you find out what really happens to her, it's terrible. Oh, like the whole, yeah. Like, w this man made it wor more worse than it, worser, uh, than it could have been, you know, he handled it very poorly. And it's just, like, so terrible. He's confessing so that the man is like, I loved her, and she just died when she was sick. And, and you know, and I was like, okay, you did not handle this right. And I didn't believe in one thing. But the delivery of how is he explaining what he did was so poorly acted and over dramatic, and she's just t Jane is just tied to a chair with a with a black wig, which wasn't so terrible. And it's like this is not not the time or place for that, you know. It's like it's just oh, it is so bizarre the choices they made in this. Had it been better acted, a little bit more serious overall, you could have totally done this storyline. But like I said, yeah. it, the camp did not mix and. It, it was so dramatic. I literally wrote so dramatic. This one was oh, bonkers. Yeah. I okay. I don't know how you feel about Stephen Huzar in in these movies, and I I could take him or leave him. You know, sometimes he's pretty good. Sometimes I think he could be better. You know, mm -hmm. but that's my personal taste. Uh, and I don't mean to be mean, but I think he's lost in these movies. Either he doesn't have a grasp of what his character should be doing because he just randomly pops up and he's sitting mm -hmm. there. Oh, uh, is this the one with police corruption too in this one? Oh, no, that's the first that's movie. A, I'm sorry. Oh. That was the deadly prescription. I'm getting them confused. That also dealt with police corruption. So we have that as well in mm -hmm. these movies. But yeah, but like sometimes I don't feel he has quite a grasp and he just looks lost in some of his scenes. Like, what's going on here? You know? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, he, also, he did the Christmas, Harris movie. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. And he did Christmas Wedding Planner that also has Stephen Hussar. And this is notoriously bad. And uh, I was <laughs> I just got a memory of my brother walking out going, I can't believe you made me watch that <laughs> during that movie. But. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, he's oh. a working director. 
Yeah. He definitely knows how to work with a budget, I guess. Because yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, I I wonder if a little bit of that is the, the the lost part is maybe maybe it's the directing, um, maybe if you're told one thing and then it's not driving like and you yeah, mm, you gotta be consistent in the direction. Because I so. think he's especially lost in this one. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of floats everywhere. Yeah, he does. He feels out of place. Where I think, um, Jody and her aunt Sadie, I can't remember the actress's name who plays it. I feel like they know what they're in. For the mm-hmm. most part, yeah, and he feels like I haven't quite, I haven't quite nailed this down, and which is okay because he doesn't have that much to do. Yeah, but there's another thing about this movie which is hysterical. They are looking at like 15 year old photos taken on fil- t- taken with on film, film. on film camera, right? And they look pristine, digital. They can uh, clear it up up you know zoom into it and it's perfect you can read numbers and what made me laugh was they have they're looking through all these vhs tapes right and they put it in the vcr and this is when we see you know uh, they see proof of the woman that they're looking for who is missing working at the cafeteria it is they don't even make it look old it looks like hd digital quality (laughs) that they're watching on a vhs tape like it's so smooth, so clean. There's not even lines. I right. mean, for the young folks, VHS, you know, they were at tapes, you know? Yeah. Put them in a box. It's hard to explain, but that, you know, and I was like, no way. These are recorded tapes, security tapes. They wouldn't look this good. Right. It's, it's so funny. There's no, they don't pay any attention to detail. No. And, and I'm like, what year are we in? <laughs> I don't know. I what? don't know. <laughs> Ah, that was so funny and so out of place in this movie. And then also, oh my gosh, also out of place because this is so, the crime is so serious. But then they have the lady who works at the admissions breaking into Jane's apartment, taking pictures, trying, because, oh, she listens to true crime podcasts. Right. So she figures she can solve this crime. And I'm like, okay, that has yeah. a little bit of ring of truth to it because. You know, there's armchair detectives out there. Yeah. But man, like, I was like, this poor lady of a certain age making her crawl through a window and right. flipping over all this stuff. I was like, come on. She reminds me of a <laughs> Disney character and I cannot place it. <laughs> it's going to bother me. Oh, I don't know, but it was. Oh, gosh. It was it's, yeah. So funny. And what they introduce in this movie, we talk about the death of Jane's mother. Mm-hmm. And it's a, susp- a suspicious car accident. And we end kind of with the cliffhanger. Like, it's not a suspicious, uh, you know. Right. Um, it's like, there, there seems to be something more to it. And then they completely forget that plot line by the next movie. I thought, I, ooh, maybe that's what the next movie's about. Like, some more stuff with her mom. And then they never mention it again. I know. I know. Okay. That is my one beef with some of these Hallmark Mysteries yes. series mm-hmm. is they have these underlying stories. Like, for example, Martha's Vineyard. Like, that's one that still drives me nuts because there are so many, like, they were building up, building up, and then, like, the series just kind of died. And I was like, well, yeah, well, but because they canceled the series, I think. Yeah. I enjoyed yes. those, but I totally think it was the cop who was helping him investigate who got shot was the one who shot him. Oh, that's yeah. my theory. 100%. That's, that's 100%, right? That's my theory yes. about it. And I'm like, that is my oh, theory. So, so, yeah, because when I feel secure about it, I'm like, that's how it is. And then I just let it go. But this one, they don't even mention anything about yeah. her mom. And her mom plays, because this was the night that she left, like the night that this alleged mm-hmm. disappearance or slash murder happened. It was, you know, the night her mom died, the night she broke up with her boyfriend, the night she left college and she went off to Europe to sing. And uh, this is a very artsy college and stuff. But the fact that nobody remembered her, even though, you know, she's got like contemporary. A black wig will solve everything, you know. Right. You look completely different. 100%. 100%. (laughs) Yeah. This one just had a lot of loose. Loose ends. Yeah. Yeah. And... I, definitely, I feel like they could have tightened it up. They could oh, have right. maybe even like weaved it a little closer together with the disappearance yeah. of the girl and her, you know, her mom. Like, I don't know how you would have weaved that all together, but I feel like I don't know. I just thought I was like, these are breadcrumbs for a future yeah. movie, and I really thought the next movie would tackle it or at yeah. least have some more clues, but not not yeah. one mention. Nope, nope. It was like, yeah. nope, we forgot. Her mom and this, is... Yeah, and this movie, you can clearly tell it's one set. Mm, yeah. 
Yes, for sure. With it's the, the one yeah. set. Like they they're just walking down the actual ha- hallway of the studio they're filming in. They didn't mm-hmm. dress that up. That's an actual yeah. hallway. You know, they just walked outside. Yeah. You know, and uh, you know, I I'm not gonna give the set people too much because they work over overtime making it look mm-hmm. as lived in as possible. So they are doing their job, but you could just tell. Yeah. And those CG backgrounds are a choice. Yeah. <laughs> you know? For sure, for sure. I do have to address one last thing. Um <laughs> back to the um Dean Simpson and Hana, his mm. his mail order bride wife that he was no. deeply in love with. The way he explains that she's buried back in by the the raspberry bushes. I uh, number bad. one, my my jaw just like dropped. I was like, you're saying. You just took her home and buried her back here. And you didn't think anybody else would notice she was gone. Also, how did people not know? Like, I, it I ain't love. Like, yeah. It is not love. I, I it's so, so terrible when he's explaining was... this. Like, it, it's clearly she did. He did not kill her, but he did not help her in any form. He didn't take her to the hospital. He didn't call 911. Like, She's not going to get in trouble for being undocumented at the hospital if she's really sick. And she don't dead. get you in trouble for that. Right. And, and by that point, she was dead. Like, yeah. You know. And then he's like, I, and the, the line delivery that he was doing. And I was like, my man, you've got to tone this down. Like, oh, it is. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Like, it was. That's definitely a director who went cut. You don't got to go again. That was perfect. And I'm yeah. like, no, sir, it was not. <laughs> that was, that it was, it was just. It was too much for me. I, I had this is painful. (laughs) I had I had so many I had so many questions. Like after that confession, and then we see Jane and um, Detective John together again, and they're like, "Yep, she actually died of I think they said was it lupus or complications with lupus? Yeah, something like that. And she didn't have insurance. Yeah, they're like, and she she yeah. So his story checks out. He's just gonna get you know. His yeah, he hit a body. He hit a couple you. of years in jail. I'm like, what? What is going on? No, he had a body buried in his backyard for like 15 years. I don't think so. Right? Like, I just like, yeah, it's nothing. We solved the case. Let's move on. I'm like, right. guys, come on. Right? And like, did her coworkers not try to look for her? Apparently not. That, like, and the only reason this came about was because her ex boyfriend was looking at photographs and like, oh, I remember seeing something fishy. Like, I love her ex-boyfriend. Well, you know, I didn't really think anything at the time. You just saw somebody shove a dead body or what looked like a body dressed like in like, you know, with those uh, masks, those raven masks on into a trunk of a car. He's just going to walk away. Like, oh, Jane dumped me. I'm so sad. No big deal. That's probably the most realistic part of the movie, though. Like, people see things all the time and never tell anybody. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. (laughs) But, oh, another thing, too, when it looks like he's trying to flirt with Jane and he's like, well, I see that you and John work well together, so I guess that's that. And he just moves on. I was like, "What? Is, what is going on here?" Like, like John is jealous for like a moment, and then he yeah. just—he's like, "Eh, that's an ex-boyfriend, whatever." I was like, "Again, like, right?" It's like, I it's feel like good. they filmed this in three days. Yeah, yeah. This one was this one was rough. <laughs> oh, guys, rough, rough, rough. But I mean, if you need something really ridiculous, if you're having a bad day, I mean, yeah, I mean, if you're cleaning your house and you need like background noise, this mm-hmm. is the perfect, uh, Perf- yeah, absolutely. Perfect. I mean, you will stop vacuuming every once in a while to see them performances, you know, because you mm-hmm. got to see it to believe it. But uh, right, you know, I mean, yeah, this one. Oh boy, yeah. <laughs> We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. Movie. 
is too much to lose. Um, as Jane prepares for the Children's Hospital Gala fundraiser alongside her aunt Sadie, she's approached by reporter Margaret, seeking help in locating her missing colleague Irene. The seasoned journalist disappeared days after winning big on a popular game show, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions. Partnering once again with Detective John Cameron, Jane delves into a world of high-stakes competition, blackmail, and fraud. As they uncover layers of deception involving fellow journalists and charity scams, Jane must navigate dangerous territory to expose the truth. With the gala approaching and the investigating heating up, Jane and John find themselves confronting not only the culprits, but also their growing bond. Hmm. Okay, so this one I have to say, because I'm a postable. Sherry Miller, my postable is listening. Oliver's yeah. mom is in this one. And yeah. she is she's so Sherry Miller. Like <laughs> it's so good. It's so and good she plays her. twins, which was awesome. Yes, like, yes, she does. But uh, what a game show it was. And I can't believe they actually showed it. It's a game show about puns. And I was like, this movie is, n- this franchise is not serious. Right. Okay. So I was watching it <laughs> on my phone in the bathroom. I count- like, had it on the counter and my husband walked by and he's like, <laughs> is- what are you doing? Like he was, he was like, wow, Hallmark's really reaching right now. <laughs> I'm like, I don't even know. I can't even defend it. I can't even justify. Like, he didn't know what I was watching. He didn't know it was a mystery or anything. But he was just like, The fact that they showed us. I know. They showed us segments of that show. And I was like, wait, what? I I looked it up. Yeah, I looked it up because uh, it's based on on the, um, on what, um, it's based on the third book in the series, which is called Mm. Electric City. And it is, they're on Jeopardy. And I was like, that's why they, like, of course they made it up because, but it's supposed to be Jeopardy. Oh. And that's why it kind of looks like Jeopardy, but it's not, but it's about puns. Right. And this dude's like, I'm famous for puns, the contestant. And I was like, this is a rip on Jeopardy. It kind of felt like that. And Yeah. You know. I was, I mean, they have so many game shows now. Oh, I know, but it's, I, 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 I can't would watch believe they committed to that to screen. <laughs> They committed to that. They sure did. Oh, they oh it only took them it. four movies, but we've got Stephen Huzar shirtless in this one. So we there sure you go, did. ladies. Yeah. yeah, that was fun. You know, I yeah. I love. I just love how these women of a certain age get all flustered and like, oh, oh man, <laughs> he don't have his shirt on. Like, yes, we have something going on possibly, but I'm like, lady, you've seen plenty of shirtless men, right? At the it beach, is. you know. Yeah. Very right? innocently, right? right? You know, you don't have to get flustered because you like this one particular person. Oh, oh, I have been to those conventions. Don't you? Uh, yes. Yes, you are absolutely 100% on. It's, it's great. <clears throat> Do you think it was a little over the top, the performance her and aunt was doing uh, for a children's charity? I, I, you know, it was, it was a lot. Once again, I, I feel awesome. like they, they, but, but if you're going to lean in, you're going to lean in, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, you're going to go there. It was already a little bonkers, but I, uh, I, I think th- this one has the most questionable uh, wardrobe choices. There's like those pink pants that Jody Sweet is where I was like, no lady, no, you can't be wearing those pants. <laughs> I, well, I didn't like it. I mean, she looked good, but I was like, hmm, there's yeah. a lot going on here. Like, you know, but yeah. I, this one was, uh, this one was actually fun though. And there was a lot going on the, uh, you know, going to the studio and searching mm-hmm. and how they even, oh man, you know that they were, it, when, <laughs> when they find the body of, you know, of who they're looking mm-hmm. for at the studio and Jane has just missed her like this just happened. You could tell that that is the back of the building. Right, that they're actually filming in, and then when they cut to Jane and the other reporter, it's the CGI background of right. just countless garbage cans perfectly lined. Right, right, like <laughs> does not fit the vibe. Yeah, like those dumper, those dumpsters are way too clean to right. like be right out there. Right, and right. That made me chuckle. Right, it just didn't, and it didn't. The view of the street or whatever, it did not align where it did not align no, either no, because it was a real street to a fake street, and it was really weird. Yeah, they were not in the same room when that happened. It was very interesting. 
Um, I did love it when she's snooping and the cleaner is just emptying out the, the trash cans and notices yeah. her and just walks out like no big deal. Because yeah. as someone who was a cleaner at time, you know, at one point in her mm-hmm. life, like you walk into certain places and you see something and you're like, eh, and you just walk right out. You don't question it. I'm just here to throw out the trash. Yeah, you're just, she was so unbothered. You like, saw, was you do so get great. unbothered and desensitized, like, when yeah. you clean and you have to, like, go home and, like, you know, and, like, no, I'm not dealing with this. Do, you do you. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna get my job done and yeah. walk right out. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Okay, so for this one, I really thought we were gonna do the whole switcheroo twinsy thing and oh for a hot moment Nefid, I thought that yeah the, yeah the nephew was like in on it maybe or something and he was like playing the um what was her name margaret or whoever his girlfriend is now yeah i thought we were gonna go a whole route there because i'm like i wouldn't put a past hallmark because they think they're so sneaky yeah they've done this before and they've done it in really good like ways so I was just waiting for it. And then when it started to not, I was like, oh, no, we're going a different direction. We totally. Are. Which was fun. Which was kind of like, oh, I was like, oh, they're switched, you know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, you know, it's all for money. And then not. And I was like, oh, well, they went a different way. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. let me ask you a question. <clears throat> yeah. If you're just minding your own business, driving around, walking, going to a cafe, and are you not going to notice somebody uh, behind you wearing high heels, a, a cape coat, and a giant hat, black hat, right. following you at every moment, wearing sunglasses? You're just never going to notice that, like right, for like, miles on end. You're never going to notice right. that she's driving behind you in a red jeep, or following you so close. Like her costume was bizarre. I was like, it, it, she did not blend in. No. I was like, how did you notice somebody in a cape coat? Yeah. <laughs> I you would people would be looking like, dude, are you sure? So like, funny how happening? nobody batted an eye at her. Nobody yeah. batted an eye. It's like, yeah, we see people like this all the time. Right, right. <laughs> and then the fact that they were so oblivious that she didn't even notice that um Jane stole the Oh, I know. In plain envelope. daylight, nobody noticed it. She didn't like there was no she could not be a pickpocket in real life. She was no. so obvious. It's so obvious. And I feel like <laughs> In real life, that would be so loud. Like you just hear so f- loud, yeah. The rustling of that, of, right? You know that envelope, and oh man, in a cafe, <laughs> like have we wearing a cape coat, sunglasses, and a giant black hat? <laughs> so much is happening, just too much. But you know what? We got the costumes. We're here for yeah. the costumes. We're here for the costumes. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh, and, and then. <laughs> I will also say to the whole um, the whole charity scam thing and how that was interwoven into this one. Mm-hmm. I will say, okay, I'll give it to the writers on that. Yeah, at first I thought this is going to be a separate kind of storyline. Mm-hmm. You know, they managed to weave it all in, and I was like, it doesn't feel too contrived. Mm-hmm. But there yeah. was this weird moment because for a moment in the movie, I did forget about the children's hospital. Like they're doing it for the charity for the children's hospital. I did yes. forget that for a moment when I was watching because there's just a scene and it's never explained where Jane calls John and he is having tea with this little girl. Yes. And I was like, for a moment I forgot. I was like, oh, maybe that's his niece, his relative. And then the, he never explains why he was having tea, why he was there. And I was like, is this guy just randomly having tea with little girls? I mean, is this weird? And then the aunt was like, my charity for the hospital. I was like, oh, that's what it was for. It was for, I was like, why is he so? Yeah, that was. I uh, completely was... spaced. It was just mm-hmm. me. But like, I sat there perplexed, like, wait, why is he having tea with these little girls? Is she not related to him? Yeah, is nobody no. questioning this? You know, like. I was so, I was so confused. With that too. Yeah. And I thought he was doing volunteer hours because he got in trouble for messing with the case that wasn't under his jurisdiction. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, be like, I, I, didn't I don't know think why. about that. But it's like, he's is- just sitting there, you know, at the little kid's table with a little girl drinking tea. Yeah. And I was like, I, I said, oh, maybe this is a. I said, oh, he's got family duties hanging out, right? He can't work right yeah. now. He's doing- and I'm like, no, why? And then they never mention it. And then it's like the children's hospital. I was like, oh, it was for the charity. Yeah. And I was like, but he is, I guess it's just the way he's in a room by himself with this little girl. And it just, right. it was so weird. It was, was like, it was so out of place. Weird. 
It was, it was weird, it, yeah. but I look back at it and I chuckle at that because I literally I was like, no one's going to question this. <laughs> right, right. And it just was not explained. Like, it's like they cut a scene or something like yeah, at the it's beginning, like, like oh, uh, my niece is a, a patient at the children's right. hospital. You, that She's would have made sense. Yeah. And, yeah. Because at this point in the movie, when that happens, you forget that there's a charity thing going on. And he's yeah. just like in a room sitting with a little girl drinking tea and you're like, uh, okay, you know, is this a case? Is he on another case interviewing a suspect? It could have been all that, but they never mentioned it. Is and it then I put two child? and two. Yeah, it took me way too long to put two and two together. I will admit that that was like, oh, that was for the charity. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah. He's, you know, he's, he apparently is very free. This is the right. only movie that she doesn't, that Jane and her aunt don't appear in pajamas. At oh, that's home. true. That's true. Yeah, so they didn't have pajama budget, you know, with that cape coat. They, well, couldn't... you know why they didn't have the pajama budget? It's because they had to pay for the parrot. Oh, the oh my gosh, after. yes. Oh, you're right. That might, Oh, that cost him a pretty penny. You know it. Yeah. Did. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, uh, the, the parrot, Perry the parrot is on IMDb. It's actually not a parrot. It's a cockatiel. <laughs> named that's Kiwi. what they were calling it. And I was like, wait a minute, that's not a parrot. <laughs> I don't think so. I was like, I don't believe so. Right. But uh, yeah. oh, the funniest part too is when they go to her house and they were like, oh, was your aunt a slob? She's only got a couple of mail strewn about on top of her kitchen counter. And I was like, wait, her house doesn't look that messy. She just got the mail out there. Right. I mean, like They tossed this place up. It's pristine except for crumpled mail. On the right. Like, what is happening? <laughs> I mean, geez. Obviously and I was like, <laughs> It was so funny. It was like, no, you haven't seen Messy. Right. You know? Like, do y'all have kids? Oh, no. <laughs> like, there is not a time where there is not a mess. Right. I remember spending the entire day cleaning up all of my niece and, ne and nephew's toys, categorizing them, putting them like in bins. And it took all day. And with it was two minutes. My nephew knocked the bin over and all the toys scattered all over the place. And Plus. I was like, well... Here I go again, you know, sure. like yes. I'm done for the day. <laughs> Absolutely, 100%. But, but like some ripped mail on the counter and this lady was a hardcore slob. Right. <laughs> she needs some serious help over there. <laughs> now, did they ever say how Irene was murdered? I don't believe so. I think she was knocked about the head. Yeah. and I, they... It's very vague on that. Yeah. Unless and... I missed it. And we know that Sophie and Angela were part of the charity scam ring and Irene was uncovering that she was like really this like really close to exposing them. Obviously Sophie and Angela murdered her, but it never really go they never go into that like okay, at least at least I didn't recall and maybe I completely missed it, maybe I completely spaced it. Maybe I don't it. believe so. I think she was just knocked about in the head and it was a very strange they were like, oh, we've pinned her phone. We have her phone. And she texted me. And I thought that was very stupid on the murderous part. Like, well, that why would you text? Like, you're going to find her body right there. She's not missing anymore. She's not. Because the whole thing was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm hiding right. out because people are after me. And she literally just texts them, you know, the location. And they ping her and they find her body. Right. It was like, this is not a smart move. This right. is not a smart move. Well, it was also like, what was the purpose of that? There like, was no purpose to that. Right, no. exactly. Like, And then the other thing, too, is they um, ping the phone. They're like, oh, her body, her, like the phone is in the in the theater or in the um, studio or whatever. And then all of a sudden, here comes the reporter like, oh, OK, like mm -hmm. you're actually in right. on like what? What? I I just all of that did not was not written well or things were taken out because like, OK, number one. Irene goes missing, yes. Okay, so where? how did she get murdered? Where did she get murdered? Why did they bring her body to the studio? Why? How oh, did they put it in the dumpster? Yeah. I guess, well, mm -hmm. now that I'm saying this out loud, it was because they wanted to frame the, the punny guy for the murder. Oh, that's right, like, which is also stupid. Right. Well, the pun guy goes, I only have limited, and that's true, I only have this limited fame for a while. But to be famous for puns, I was like, no. Right. I love a good pun, but nobody does, you know, but like right. people aren't famous for that. Right, right. So anyways, that was all a little confusing to me. But again, I will say I yeah. appreciate the fact that they mm -hmm. tied in the charity scam ring into yeah. the murder and it was a little more convoluted. Um, it just made for something a little more interesting than like, 
I killed because I was upset that she won something. Or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it totally. Was more complicated, yeah, but but and they stepped up the game. Like I think this is also the best looking of the films. Mm -hmm. But the when they're at the coroner's place, that is definitely the police interrogation room, though. Right, with just a different background. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, they tried, you know." Yeah. Made the <laughs> also, another thing too that I just it came to me when the reporter is like, "She's my mentor," and she goes to Jane, you know, posing like she's doing an interview, but really begging for her to help. Mm -hmm. you're like, Jane, you're so famous for what you do with with this foundation, and your uh, your costumes and your disguises are infamous in how you saw this crime. And I, I I don't know how long she's been doing it now, and I was like, "How?" How are you this sort of famous already? Like, how long have you... They don't establish right. how long she's been doing it because she's kind of just new at it in the first two movies. And mm -hmm. now she's infamous for her poor disguises. Right. <laughs> Which I'm kind of like, if they know it's you in disguise, are you actually doing a good job? Yeah, are you actually... Right. Yeah. I don't Anyways. know. But, you know. But this it's campish, but it yeah. works. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it works. And like I said, if they put it uh, another one, I, I wouldn't be mad about it. It's one of those I wouldn't. where, I, again, it's not it's not my favorite series. But it's not mm. the worst that I've seen either. Because I have seen some pretty bad Hallmark mysteries. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. So, um, so, it's yeah. very strange that this one came back. Of all the new mysteries, because a lot of the new mysteries, like you're like, yeah, I want a part two. And they just like, Never happen. And this one is like, mm -hmm. we've got three for you. Yeah, they're like, here you go. Merry Christmas. I, I feel like we're good. I feel like they went this far. We're probably going to end up getting more on this. I feel like this isn't mm -hmm. that expensive for Hallmark. And they could put it on their, on Hallmark yeah. Plus, on the streamer. And they've got new material. And then eventually they'll air it on Hallmark Mystery Proper. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like we'll eventually... We'll get some more. I, yeah. I was very surprised when I read that interview. It's like, yeah, we filmed three Jane movies. I was like, what? Yeah, like you, know. you uh, of all the ones that you're gonna film, you're gonna film these one. Okay, okay. Yeah, because right. either it's but, very weird. Hallmark continues ones we don't want, and then they continue ones that should have been long gone dead. Yeah, you know, like you could have yeah. stopped this already. You know, I'll just throw yeah. it out here. Aurora Tea Garden. Um, please stop. Um, yeah. I mean, you had 18 before the prequels. I I think we were good. Um, right, <laughs> right. Because it's also, ugh. we yeah. won't go into the whole backstory. <laughs> but I'm like, why? You're, you're ruining the backstory of the original Aurora. Like, just leave it alone. <laughs> or just but make anyhow. it something new, like Aurora's daughter or something. Yeah. But know. I'll give I'll give them credit for this. Like, yeah, they went in. They're all they all feel of the same vibe. You know, they're all oh, weird. Yeah. They're all campy. They're all questionably made. They all have yeah. questionable acting. Um, but I, I wouldn't mind to see it, you know. And mm -hmm. I think I think if you're gonna do something, another one, we need to have something more with John. Cause he's mm -hmm. really I feel like sometimes he's forgotten. Like yeah. that's why they put him having tea with that little girl, like, oh, we need to put him somewhere. Yeah. You they're know? like, hey. Hey, let's throw this scene and we won't mention why. You know? Right. Right. I feel kind of dumb that I did. I was like, oh, it's been, <laughs> it took me too long. I sat there just perplexed. I had a pause. I was like, why is he having tea with that little girl? Yeah, no, I was just as confused for <laughs> sure. Did not relate it or anything. Literally thought he was doing some volunteer service hours because he got in trouble. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, and the, at the end of the movie, when we actually see the performance for the charity concert, in the beginning of the film, I thought it was going to be like this big room that they were performing in. No, in true Jane fashion, it's just the waiting room. Right. It's the where they were having tea, the little playroom right. for the kids at the hospital. And they're performing to like four kids and right. John. Right. And I was like, what a great success. I was like, is anybody at this party? Did anybody yeah. come, you know, give yeah. money to the hospital? Yeah, and that was the other confusing part too. I was like, did they actually end up having the gala, or did they just take the money and give it to the hospital? Uh, that right, was just, right. Yeah. They don't really explain. Like, did they continue on because mm -hmm. she had to cancel the gala because mm -hmm. they stole all her money? Right. And uh, yes. they don't really answer any questions here, but it is still the best put together movie. Yeah, it is of the it three <laughs> for sure. Oh well. Oh, what it, a time. 
it, it, what a time to be alive. I what a mean, time, guys. What a time. Yeah. I think if you've never watched a Hallmark mystery and you just happen to watch these Jane movies, you would never invest in it. I would oh. say watch, watch some different ones mm -hmm. and then, you know, come into this one and just realize that it wants to be serious, but it's not serious. Yeah, it's 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 campy. It's, it's totally. Yeah. And I still don't know if I no, I don't believe it is intentional. Mm -hmm. to be campy like this. I just think it ends up coming that way. But yeah, you know, they have a budget and they did the best they could. Yeah. I feel yeah. like these were all filmed in a weekend. Don't you though? It, like, it does. It does yeah. feel filmed like, hey, you know what? We're going to knock these out. Like, knock hey, out. Like, you know, we'll, I don't, we'll do yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it'll be also, it would be interesting if they block filmed it, if they filmed like two of them at the same time. I oh they must have. I because, mean, because they only have one location, <laughs> right? And they that would make sense. sense. Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because I remember, didn't they say? Didn't they announce they were filming like two and three together or something, or two and three and four, like boom, boom, boom on that side yeah, or, or something like that? Yeah, and I, yeah. <laughs> so maybe I was they perplexed again, but like, yeah, they probably did to save to save money and to yeah. get because I do like I. I think this was, I th this might be a Brian Power. Now I can't remember what the production company, the main production company of uh, it, but I, I do feel like this is like Hallmark, like we can get this for cheap and like, yeah, yeah it's Brian Power Studio. That makes complete sense, by the mm. way. You know, yeah. they did Jazz Ramsey and some other stuff. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, so they filmed this in a weekend back to back and uh, some were successful, one was not. Yeah. Um, so, but I wouldn't start off your mystery with this. You know? No, no. I go, you know, st start slowly. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's a lot yeah. to choose from. There's a lot of mysteries to choose from. Right. But right. if you want camp and, you know, lost, folding. babies lost in the sauce, like, yeah. you know, where am I? This one's for you. <laughs> fun times, fun times. Well, Terry... It was so fun chatting with you over this. This was fun, yes. And I'm still um, perplexed. I have no answers, but I would, like you said, I want more. I do. Yeah. Selfishly, I want more because yeah. I want to experience what I experienced when I watched it. Right. <laughs> oh, too fine, too fine. <sighs> oh, goodness. Well, all Markies and Sleuthers, let us know what you all thought about these Jane mysteries. Um, let us know about the costumes, the CGI backgrounds, the questions that we have that are not answered. We want to hear from you, and you can find all of us at Hallmarkies Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, X, wherever you can find it. That's where we are. Let us know in the comments what you want to hear about next. And we will be back, hopefully, to talk about, I think, Christmas movies. Oh, yep. And, um, yeah. So have a great one, Hallmarkies. And we will talk to you later. Bye. Bye.